it's getting to that time of year where there's just a ton of mock drafts out there. And honestly, a good portion of them are pretty dumb. Not all of them, there definitely are some that are very good, but it does seem like at least a percentage of them are just designed to have purposely bad picks so that way they'll get more clicks, which I really hate. Really when it comes down to it, mock drafts are supposed to be fun, and so I decided let's just have some fun and I'll do a mock draft. So anyways, let's just jump into it. My first overall pick isn't the guy who I would pick first overall, but I think it's the guy that the Cardinals are going to pick first overall, and that's Kyler Murray. But just to be clear, the only reason I wouldn't pick him first overall is because I'm pretty pro Josh Rosen, and I'm very pro Nick Boza, so that's why I would rather take Nick Boza. But that being said, Kyler Murray is a tremendous athlete. The guy's a fantastic runner. I mean, we all know that. He can run around in the pocket with the best of them. But really what I like about him just as much is his ability to throw deep passes down the field and also his accuracy. I mean, he's just, he's completely accurate in a lot of these throws. If they do end up drafting Kyler Murray, they'll definitely have to figure out some other ways to bolster that line. I mean, that line was really bad last year and they'll really have to look to improve it. And they also could use some help in the receiving core department. But I do have to say, as much as I keep saying I wouldn't draft Kyler Murray first overall, there is a very real chance in 10 years from now, this guy is an all-pro player and has won Super Bowl. So there's a very real chance of that happening, but that's just my opinion on that pick. I do think he'll end up going first overall, and I think he's worthy of a first overall pick. I just think the team isn't right. But that being said, he's a great player, and that's what I think is going to happen at number one. Then there's the aforementioned Nick Boza, who I just don't see any way he falls past number two. I really think the only way he doesn't get picked up with that number two pick is if the Cardinals pick him up with the number one pick, because I think he's that talented. I mentioned in my long-form video about him how there is one thing I don't love, and that's that he has a tendency to get a little bit too cute and give up containment to try to get a sack from time to time. But I think it should be mentioned that if that's your biggest flaw, then yeah, you're going to be doing pretty well in this league. I also just think the way he'll fit on that line is just absolutely deadly. I mean... I do think it should be mentioned that the idea of a line with DeForest Buckner, Nick Boza, and D Ford really could make your mouth water. Moving on to number three, there's another really talented, great player that I've made a long form video on in the past, and that's Quinnen Williams, and this guy is just an absolute beast. As I mentioned in my long form video about him, one of the flaws I see is that he is a bit of a work in progress. I think it'll take him a couple of years to really get to his full potential. But the Jets are in a position where they're looking to be good for the next 10 years, not just be good for next year. So that's why this pick makes a ton of sense for them. And also, it just it, he's a great player. The fact of the matter is, his footwork is just out of this world. And it's really probably the best footwork we've seen since Aaron Donald. So that's why I have my number three going to the Jets. And I think that pick would just make a ton of sense. Now moving on to number four, I think the Raiders find their replacement for Khalil Mack with Josh Allen. And this is just a kid I absolutely love. I think this guy is going to be an elite pass rusher very soon. I honestly think this guy could have double digit sacks next season in his rookie year because he's already that talented. He's fast and that's what I really like about him and I really think that he would just fit so well in this Raiders defense. This Raiders defense has a lot of holes and pass rusher is definitely one of them. But I think as we saw with when Khalil Mack was on the Raiders is that one pass rusher can greatly improve a bad defense. If you have a defense with holes but can still consistently get to the quarterback, it can allow you to make some big plays and turn those losses into wins. If you have a bad defense but you have an elite pass rusher, that can really help your team. I mean, even take a look at the Chiefs last year. Their defense wasn't great, but they could at least consistently get to the quarterback. They did still get a lot of points because their defense isn't that great, but they still did get some big stops and big splash plays because of their defense being able to get to the quarterback. Not to mention, obviously, the Raiders' plan is to always have a bad defense so I like this pick at number four for Raiders for Josh Allen and now let's move on to number five I have the Buccaneers selecting Ed Oliver it's once again one of those situations where a team is getting a great player and it's a position of need I mean Tampa Bay does have two interior linemen in Gerald McCoy and Vita Vea and while Vea has looked strong after his rookie season Gerald McCoy is definitely getting up there in age and he's not worth his 13 million dollar contract that he once had so I can definitely see Tampa Bay selecting Oliver and then letting McCoy go and I can also see Ed Oliver being transitioned into a 3-4 defensive end, which I think he could actually fit in very well since he does have great footwork and he's a very fast player for an interior lineman. Moving on to number 6, I have the New York Giants selecting Dwayne Haskins. There was a lot of comments when I made my Golden Tate video about how the Giants aren't going to be selecting a quarterback in the first round of the draft this year. And I'll be honest, if Haskins and Murray are off the board by their 6th overall pick, I could actually see that being the case. But if Haskins falls to 6, I don't see any way they pass up on him. And the fact of the matter is, I really think Haskins is the next best thing in this NFL. I actually think he's the best quarterback in this draft. And I'm making a video on him that's coming up later this week. And that'll sort of show why I feel that way. I can honestly talk about how great Haskins is all day, but not only do I think they'll select him because he's great, but I also think the Giants kind of wanted to have a new image of them this next season after they've been criticized so highly for their last few moves. You can make a lot of bad decisions, but if you draft the franchise quarterback, those bad decisions will quickly be forgotten. So I don't think that'll be the reason for it. I think the reason will be because Dwayne Haskins is really good, but that could be another factor that goes into it. Moving on to number seven, it's not a very sexy pick, but I do think it's probably the best pick for the Jaguars would be Juwan Taylor. 
I know Blake Bortles gets a lot of the blame, and a good portion of it is well deserved. However, the fact of the matter is, he was totally scapegoated for Jacksonville last year, and that's not to say that he was good, it's to say that the rest of the offense was also very bad, and he kind of got blamed for all of their problems. And again, they have some pieces, I'm not saying they're a complete garbage fire, but I do think that adding Taylor could definitely help that offensive line, and then help Nick Foles, and help the entire team as a whole. Moving on to the number 8 overall pick, I have the Detroit Lions selecting Devin White. I definitely think this is the position of need for Detroit, I think he can help him out in a lot of ways, and I think he's a talented player. This guy is great in pass coverage, he's a very fast linebacker, which I always like, I love linebackers with speed. I do think he is a player with flaws, he definitely struggles in tackling, and he also doesn't take the best angles from time to time, which I don't love. And his football IQ is also definitely a little bit sketchy, I mean not to say that it's bad, but just the fact that he does get fooled pretty often on play action, he does kind of take bad angles, so I would be a little bit worried about White, but that being said, he's clearly a tremendous talent. Moving on to pick number 9, I have the Buffalo Bills selecting Jonah Williams. Again, this is not the most sexy pick, it's a tackle, people usually aren't too excited when you select a tackle, but tackles are very important in football. The Buffalo Bills had a very below average offensive line last year, and it was even close to being a very bad offensive line, so they definitely have some room to improve there, and I definitely I think that's what'll probably go with the ninth overall pick. I also think they like Josh Allen and want him to live past 27, so they'll probably want to bolster the offensive line to a degree. For a 10th overall pick, I have the Broncos selecting Drew Locke, and I know what everyone's going to say, but you already have elite Joe Flacco, why do you need another quarterback? But of course, no one's actually going to say that. I think we all realize that this Joe Flacco situation is kind of a Mike Glennon type situation, where he'll probably start for the beginning part of the season, and then they'll move over to Locke, or whoever they get next year. I actually like Drew Locke a lot. I think he's definitely one of those guys that's either going to be a top five quarterback in the league or a complete bust. I think he's kind of in that kind of range where he has a huge arm and he's very accurate on those deep passes. The biggest problems I've seen on him is his football IQ and his footwork. He definitely struggles in both of those two aspects of the game. But those are two things that with good coaching you can fix. And I kind of think that's the kind of guy you got to look for when you're trying to draft someone is who's the guy with the biggest potential. I do see the irony of his name being Locke and the fact that I do not think he's a Locke to be great in this league. But I do think there's a very good chance he will be great, and that's why I think the Broncos will select him, as they really need a quarterback. With the number 11 pick, I had the Cincinnati Bengals selecting Rashawn Gary. He's absolutely more of a disruptor, and more of the kind of guy who's going to stop the run than get to the quarterback for sacks, but that's okay in an interior lineman. And especially when he's right next to Atkins, that becomes a very scary middle of the line. I think it's a position of need for Cincinnati, and I think Gary's just a complete freak of nature, and he's an athletic specimen, so I really can see this pick working out very well for Cincinnati. With this next pick, I had the Packers selecting Brian Burns. I think the Packers have definitely made a clear effort to try to improve that defense a lot this past season. With picking up guys like Adrian Amos, Preston Smith, and Zadarius Smith, they've clearly tried to make an effort to improve that defense, and I think this would be another great pick to improve their defense. He's definitely kind of skinny for a defensive end. I mean, he's listed at 6'5 and 230 pounds. But that being said, I don't think it would be too hard for him to pick up another 10, 15 pounds. I don't think that's something I would worry about too much. With the number 13 overall pick, I had the Miami Dolphins selecting Christian Wilkins. He's a tremendous athlete. He's probably the best player still on the board at this point. And I really think Miami is just going to go best player available here. He's an explosive player, and I think Miami definitely could look to improve their defensive line. I know they could definitely use a quarterback, but I really think the move is draft one in one of the later rounds and then wait a year to draft one early up. Hope that you win the lottery with a second or third round pick, and if not, then you'll get a high pick next year where you can try to draft the quarterback then. This is kind of a weird spot where it's a little too late to get a great quarterback, especially with three quarterbacks already off the board. I think they go Wilkins here and they try to rebuild for the future. With the 14th overall pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons selecting Montez Sweat. I think that they could definitely use a defensive lineman of some sort. I think Sweat's definitely a very interesting guy. I mean, he definitely wasn't going to be a top 10 pick before the combine, but he had one of the best combines we've seen by a defensive lineman in quite some time. He was really impressive in that combine. I really think he would fit right in with the Falcons, and the Falcons are still a very good team. I know they didn't do too well last year, but they had just so many injuries. I wouldn't really hold that against them too much. I definitely could see the Falcons right back in the playoff race next year, and I think Sweat would help with that. With the 15th overall pick, I have the Washington Redskins selecting Daniel Jones. The difference between the Redskins and the Dolphins, and the reason why I think the Dolphins won't go quarterback, and the reason why I think the Redskins will, is because I think the Redskins are looking to compete next year. I mean, really, we saw what happened when Alex Smith went down, and it's not like Alex Smith was tearing things apart with them anyways. They definitely need a quarterback. I definitely don't think Colt McCoy is the answer, and the fact of the matter is, I think Daniel Jones could be. I definitely have my problems with Daniel Jones. I think his consistency is definitely lacking. But if you watch his highlight reel, it's very impressive. The problem is he, just, he lacks a little bit of accuracy, which I really don't love in a quarterback. So I'm not saying I probably would pick him in the 15th overall pick, but I think the Redskins will. Moving on to the 16th overall pick, I have the Carolina Panthers selecting TJ Hawkinson, and there's not really too much to talk about here, honestly. Since Greg Olson has retired, the Panthers could use another tight end or another weapon of some sort, and Hawkinson clearly could be the answer. With this system that Carolina runs of a lot of short passes and a lot of runs up the middle, tight ends become very important, and that's why I think Hawkinson could be a very big fit 
in that Carolina Panthers offense. And I think he's a really talented player. So that's why I have him going at number 16. And now moving on to number 15, I have the New York Giants selecting Ceylon Farrell. Really, this is a top 10 overall pick talent that's just falling because there is so many great defensive linemen in this draft. The Giants are in a position with some of these picks, they should just draft the best player available, and I think that's what they're doing here with Farrell. They also could definitely use an edge rusher, and Farrell is a really talented player, so that's why I see Farrell going at number 17. Moving on to number 18, basically when I was deciding who they would pick, I just looked at best offensive linemen available, and that's how I figured this guy was going to be picked. I mean, the reality is, the Vikings have neglected O-line for many years now, and it's really come back to bite him several times. And luckily for them, I think there's going to be a very talented that offensive lineman falling to that number 18 pick, and that's Andre Dillard. This is just one of those situations where I think one of the best players available is also in a position of need, so it just makes a ton of sense for the Vikings to go after Dillard here. And speaking of that situation, I think the very next situation will happen with the 19th overall pick, as I have DK Metcalf falling to number 19 and getting picked up by the Tennessee Titans. And again, he's kind of an interesting player. I mean, physically, he's a beast. You look at his highlights, and you're like, this guy is Calvin Johnson 2.0. I mean, he's really impressive. The problem is that he has, at times, been taken out of the game. I mean, you put him against a great corner, and great corners have taken him out of the game. I think a lot of people will point out the fact that he wasn't in the best situation for him to truly succeed, and I think that is true, but the fact of the matter is, now there's question marks. So that's the negative is a Metcalf, and that's why I think he will fall to number 19, but I think the Titans are actually going to get a great player. I actually think that he is going to be very good. I think worst case scenario, you got a great jump ball threat that can get you some touchdowns, which is definitely very valuable. The guy is a physical freak, and when you put him on the Tennessee Titans offense, who desperately need a true number one receiver, this now allows Corey Davis to move into that number two role, and finally gives Marcus Mariota some weapons to work with, because I think Mariota is still a very talented player, and still will be effective once they finally get some weapons for him. Moving on to the number 20th overall pick, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers picking up Greedy Williams, and again, it's a situation where there's a great player on the board, and just a position of need. Greedy has pretty much the perfect name for a corner, and I do think that he will fit well in the Steelers defense. He's a tall corner at 6 three he's only 183 pounds but i don't really care about that too much corners can be skinny that's fine but i love the 6-3 part of it i think that he's a very talented guy there's some mock drafts having him going top 10 i don't think he'll go that early i think he will fall down a bit but i think the pittsburgh steelers pick him up here and get a much needed asset in that defensive back department moving on to the 21st pick i have the seahawks selecting deontay thompson and i think it makes a lot of sense for them because they definitely need a safety after losing earl thomas last season I actually think he's really talented. If teams didn't draft based on position and just drafted best player available regardless of position, he'd probably go top 10. His biggest problem is just the position he plays. He plays safety and teams don't want to draft safety early on, which is why they're going to let him fall to number 21 in my opinion. Moving on to number 22, I have the Ravens selecting center Garrett Bradbury. And I know what everyone's going to say, wait a second, why are you drafting a center in the first round? You don't draft centers in the first round. But you do when you're a team like the Baltimore Ravens, who love to swing guys over in different directions due to the way they run their offense. I mean, just about every play, they're swinging a guard or swinging a center over to give themselves better blocking angles for Lamar Jackson or whoever to hand the ball off to. So while typically the center is the fifth most important person on the offensive line, they really become much more important in the Ravens' offensive line. It's also a position of need, as they lost Jensen the season before this one, and Sucker has kind of been, he's played okay, but he just hasn't been starting level talent. Moving on to the 23rd overall pick, I have the Houston Texans selecting Cody Ford, and the reason for that is because they just need offensive line. Last season, I thought the Houston Texans were going to have the worst offensive line in the league by far, and they didn't. They only had close to the worst offensive line in the league. I think you could make the argument that they still did have worst offensive line in the league, but they just weren't by far, which is why I was still pleasantly surprised by them. And it was actually quite shocking to me that they won so many games despite having a bad offensive line. And the reason I like this Cody Ford pick is he can also play guard or tackle, and I think that versatility could really help the Houston Texans. Along with him probably being the best offensive lineman still available, that's why I think they go O-line here at number 23. Moving on to number 24, I think the Raiders need some linebacker help, and so they're going to select Devin Bush with that 24th overall pick. I really think Gruden's plan here was to sign offensive pieces and then draft defensive pieces, which is why I have him going defense again here at number 24. And also, spoiler alert, I have him going defense at 27 as well. I think Devin Bush is actually the best player available. He's a fantastic linebacker, and when it's a position of need like it is for Oakland, it just makes all the sense in the world. Moving on to number 25, I think the Eagles actually go running back here, and they pick up Josh Jacobs. Again, this is just one of those situations where I feel like Jacobs is going to fall simply because of the position he plays as teams just don't like to draft running backs too high. Unless it's a generational talent like Saquon Barkley or Ezekiel Elliott, really it's 
aware that a running back will get drafted too high, and the only reason you really want to draft a running back in the first place is if you're looking to be competitive in the near future. The Eagles are certainly looking to be competitive in the near future, and they definitely could use a running back. I don't think the fact that they traded for Jordan Howard will affect them in any regard in this situation. I think they'll still go running back if they feel like that's the necessary move. Some of the definite upsides with having Jacobs is the fact that one thing, he played for Alabama, and they have a running back by committee system, so he doesn't have too much wear and tear on his body. And I mean, he can do pretty much anything well. He's definitely a power back, but he has quickness as well. He's a good pass catcher and a good blocking running back, meaning that he really is a true three down back. And with the way Philly loves to use deception and RPOs to fool opposing defenses, I definitely think having Jacobs, who won't give anything away, could really help their offense. Moving on to number 26, I have the Colts selecting wide receiver AJ Brown. I definitely really like AJ Brown. He's a great slot receiver and he can play on the outside and can be a number two to T.Y. Hilton if necessary. I'm not sure I'd go as far to say he can be a true number one receiver, but he definitely could be a Jarvis Landry type and be a very talented player. The Colts don't really need offense, but really they don't really need anything. So when you have a late first round pick, why not get a luxury pick like a wide receiver? Moving on to the number 27th overall pick, as I alluded to earlier, the Raiders do go defense here as they select Brian Murphy. Again, it's just another situation where Raiders stocking up on defense with these draft picks and making sure to have a good defense going into the next year. Or at least not having as bad of a defense as they once had and with having Bush, Murphy, and Allen and added to that defense, I think they're looking really good. That's a defensive core that can last you for some time and can definitely turn the Raiders into one of the worst teams in the league to one of the better teams in the league. And one thing I have to say is I just don't love short corners. I know it's just a totally irrational thing to say because there have been plenty of good short corners in the league and there's definitely been plenty of tall corners who have been bust, but the guy's 5'11". I would like a corner that's usually around 6'1 or 6'2 at least. I guess you could say I'm like a girl on Tinder. I like my corners above 6 foot. But that being said, I definitely think that he still is a very talented player and I think he'll be effective. And I think he will be effective in the Raiders defense, which is why I'm having him going in the first round. With the number 28 pick for the Chargers, it was actually kind of a tough one for me, but I'm going to have him go with Dexter Lawrence. The reason it was tough is because you can't really go by position of need because the Chargers really don't need any position. They're a really well-built team with no obvious flaws. But you know, there's a saying in baseball that when you have enough pitching, you go out and get some more, and I kind of feel it's the same way with defensive line. When you have more defensive linemen, you go out and get some more, because the fact of the matter is, they can drop like flies. Worst case scenario, he'd be a very good rotational player, and I think he's definitely still starter material, so that's why I would really like the Dexter Lawrence pick at number 28. Moving on to number 29th overall pick, I had the Kansas City Chiefs selecting Rocky Asin. Defensive back is definitely a massive position of need, especially with all the nickel and dime packages they ran last season. And I know Bob Sutton is gone, but as I always say, if the head coach is the same, there will definitely be some similarities moving season to season. And while they did go out and get Matthew, who I think will fit in their system very well, I think adding Yassin will definitely also help them and try to bring that defense up to potentially a good level. Moving on to number 30th overall pick, the Packers have another pick, and I think again, they're going to go defense here. I think they're going to draft a safety to pair with Amos, and that's going to be Taylor Rapp. There is some concern of him, especially the fact that he ran a 4.7440, which I think will get a lot of people a little bit worried. But the 40 can be a little bit misleading. It always is worth mentioning that acceleration is really more important than speed as a whole. And this guy accelerates very well, and he changes direction very well, which is why I think he still is a very talented safety, and that's why I have him going number 30. With the 31st overall pick, I think the Rams go best player available, and that player is Jerry Taylor in my opinion. He's definitely another one of those guys who in a different draft could end up going in the first half of the draft, but just due to all the great defensive line talent, he probably will fall back to the late round or even a second round pick. Sue is getting up there in age, and the Rams clearly have made an effort to try to work from the inside of the line out, and if he could be a Pro Bowl level player, I mean, having a Pro Bowl level player next to Aaron Donald is just unfair. Honestly, having me next to Aaron Donald would be unfair with how talented that guy is, but that's besides the point. Moving on to the last pick of the first round, it's a New England Patriots pick, and it definitely is a little bit of a tough pick to make. For one thing, it is kind of weird that the team that just won the Super Bowl actually does have some holes that I could see them trying to fill up. For one thing, they could look at another quarterback, as Tom Brady will probably only play for another 15 or 20 years, so they're going to have to look for a new quarterback back at some point. That's a joke, obviously. Brady is clearly looking to be on his way out in the next couple of years, and you would think that you'd want to get a good quarterback now if you can. And they could look to pick up his replacement in this draft. However, I don't think they will, at least not with this pick. I think they'll probably wait around. In my opinion, they're going to actually go after Rob Gronkowski's replacement, and the best person to do that would be Noah Fant. Fant's a great pass-catching tight end, and I think he would fit very well with Tom Brady. He's not going to be able to block as well as Gronkowski, but that's because nobody can block as well as Gronkowski. That guy blocked like an offensive lineman, but I think Fant could definitely be, he's definitely first-round material. I definitely think the Patriots could go there, but let's be honest, the Patriots never seem to pick what we think they're going to pick. They always seemingly pick someone way out of nowhere, and then it works out perfectly for them. So, we'll see what happens. And again, it has to be mentioned, that's just my opinion. That's just what I think will happen throughout all these 32 picks. And my whole point isn't to try to say, this is what's going to happen, so don't even bother watching the draft because that's just unrealistic. 
I tried to make each pick of as much logic as I could, but I'm gonna get things wrong. That just happens. So feel free to let me know in the comments below what you disagree with, what move you think the team won't make and want you to do something else instead, what was I way off on, what was I a little bit off on. Feel free to let me know. I remember I used to watch this show on MLB Network called Prime 9, where it would always count down like the 9 best of something, like the 9 best designated hitters or something. And what they would always say after every show is this isn't to end the conversation, this is to get it going. This mock draft isn't designed to end the conversation, it's to get the conversation going. So please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think, and as always, thanks for watching.